All right, guys, so this video brings us back to Sound and Vision's website as to why does my receiver default to DTS Neural X mode. What we're talking about here is when putting in a source to a receiver, uh, particularly receivers that have Dolby Atmos, DTS X, uh, why do they default to DTS Neural X or sometimes Dolby Digital plus Dolby Surround? Uh, why are they, uh, you know, why can't you get your receiver to work in the proper sound mode? First off, uh, let's go to Sound and Vision here, but let's take a look at the, our own receiver. We're working with the Marantz SR7010, SR7011, uh, same type of deal. The 7012 even is the almost the exact same thing, you know. Uh, just with the Heos multi, you know, the wireless audio technology from Denon. Uh, but let's just move through the, particularly the movie sound modes here. We got our pure sound modes, but we're going to go through the movie sound modes real quick and get an idea of what this gentleman is talking about. Okay, we got our DTS Neural X right there, our Dolby Surround. And keep in mind, this is only with a stereo source. If I were to move over to a video game here, I'll kind of move over here to another source of a, you know, a video game that's got a 5.1 uh, signal coming in, and we go to the game modes, we get a few different ones. We got the Dolby Digital Plus Neural X, like the guy's talking about, uh, but he's just saying DTS Neural X mode. Um, you know, I'm sure he's outputting things in Bitstream as well, but we got other modes as well, so... Odyssey DSX Height Oro 3D. Uh, why is the receiver defaulting, though, particularly to this one or the last one we just saw, Neural X? Uh, let's get some things down, though, quickly. Um, the Neural X mode, what is that, if people are wondering? And what that is is a way of upmixing the audio with these newer type of receivers that do Dolby Atmos DTSX. The DTS Neural X mode is a way of basically upmixing the audio so that it can utilize the height channels. So let's take a look at something generic here, Wikipedia, to use as a reference. Uh, first of all, DTS dedicated to sound. Uh, that is, I believe, incorrect. It's Digital Theater Systems, but a new company has acquired DTS, so it looks like that's what they're calling it nowadays, um, you know owned by DTS Inc., but they've actually changed hands. Um, a newer company uh, acquired DTS recently. So let's take a look at what that is, though, to get an understanding of why a um, you know receiver would default to that. First of all, Jurassic Park, I think, was one of the first uh, DTS CD-ROMs used in the 93 original release. Uh, you know, so we got many, many titles that now include DTS. Uh, first off, um, I I gotta say, guys, the DTS X as opposed to Dolby Atmos is a little bit better. I prefer it. I've always preferred the digital theater systems soundtracks over Dolby and other ways of decoding. But uh, this is this site is kind of interesting if you're interested in, in uh, the sound modes and the theater modes and stuff like that. Um, but let's just talk about what. Neural X. It's different from Neo X. Neo X is going to be a analog form of decoding the audio. You got all those different sound, you know, modes, and I ran through a few of the different ones. Um, but more or less, we're looking at the Neural X right here, and that's going to be on your newer receivers that have DTS X and Dolby Atmos. Uh, we know what DTS X is. It's basically the better version of Atmos. But what is Neural X? Usually comes on systems uh -huh, that have DTS X. Um, it's an upmixing technique for upmixing or remapping legacy bit streams and PCM content to virtually any speaker layout in which the sound can come from anywhere around the listener, including above. Okay, so we know what that is. That is uh, Neural X is essentially a sound mode in the newer types of receivers that will run height speakers and channels. Uh, it's a sound mode that's going to utilize those channels. And to be quite honest with you, uh, let's see if we can get an understanding. I'm going to have to go to a video game real quick just to, just to do it uh, quickly. But to get us an idea of what is the Neural X and how does it sound, um, I'm going to have to just kind of go like this for you. So DTS Neural X is a great sound mode that if we notice here, we're getting height audio. 
So it's great audio, uh, you know, it's a great sound mode, but, uh, you know, the question still lies as to why does it default? So I hope that was able to give you uh, at least some sort of an illustration as to what the DTS Neural X does sound like. Um, it does a great job of upmixing the audio to the height speakers, and uh, keep in mind that's gonna be used uh, when you don't have an actual native height source coming in. So uh, a, a DVD, a Blu-ray, anything that doesn't use Atmos or DTSX has the option of going into Neural X, and it's a great mode. I prefer Oro 3D to it, but uh, that's a great sound mode. I love that it's really noticeable in the height effects. It's great, but I'm a proud owner of a brand new Marantz AV7703 preamp processor, which I use with a 7.0 speaker configuration, full range fronts, and no sub. When I play a Blu-ray disc with 7.1 HD master audio DTS soundtrack, the Pre-Pro's auto surround output outputs it as DTS HD plus Neural X. And that's normal. But why would the processor create an upmixed signal instead of passing on discrete channel information to the back surrounds? I'm using an Oppo BDP-103 Blu-ray player with the audio output set to Bitstream. So he's doing everything correct. Uh, just sounds like with that Marantz receiver, and I'm really rehearsed with the Marantz and Denon's guys. Um, same with the Pioneer Elites, but those are probably the only ones I'm, I'm really positive on, you know, or have a lot of uh, experience with. Uh, but let's see what Sound and Vision says before I, you know, try to let you guys know. So let's first review that what uh, DTS Neural X is and what it does. I sort of did that for you. DTS Neural X is a, is similar to the Dolby Surround feature in Dolby Atmos processors in that it upmixes regular two-channel 5.1 or 7.1 soundtracks to add overhead sound information when overhead speakers are detected in your system. So if your Marantz processor is defaulting to DTS Neural X when fed a DTS HD 7.1 master audio soundtrack, that indicates to me that the speaker setup and processing modes haven't been configured properly. I would agree, Sound and Vision. What I'd suggest you do is first check the two speakers. The surround back option is selected on the speaker configuration menu. Next, check that the height and top speakers options are also set to none. You'll also want to visit the amp assignment menu at this point to confirm that the amplifier channel's output are set to match your speaker configuration. Real simple, guys, what they're talking about is going into here. Uh, I'm sorry, actually going into here. I'm doing an Odyssey setup or manually setting it up, going to the amp assignment, making sure his configuration is set up properly, uh, conform to what he's actually running. Uh, mine here is set up great. Um, so as you can see here, I got my two rear height speakers currently fed with an Emotiva power amplifier. I still got to add the Emotiva 5175 to power front height speakers. I'll do rear heights with those as well, and then center. And then, of course, my two-channel with a little bit more oomph, I guess, is going to power the front, left, and right. So you want to make sure what configuration you're running and that you've got that set up. The layout there, the height speakers, uh, and then the pre-out terminals if you're running a power amplifier. So that's all they're telling you here. I got some front wides, as you can see. That's why those are in the image as well. Uh, and yes, they auto switch. I can switch them with the remote between the heights or front wides or front left and rights. Uh, so that's what they're kind of talking about here. Um, but the last step should be to visit the surround parameter menu. And uh, I just kind of went into that. Um, what you do for that is just go in here, boom, surround parameter right there, cinema EQ we got turned on, um, got our dynamic volume on and all that too. But that is what they're talking about when they're telling you to go to the surround parameter menu. Check that the DTS Neural X option is set to off. Uh, the AV7703's manual states that DTS Neural X is switched on by default. According to Marantz, if all the assignments listed above are set to are set, then a Neural X upmixing simulation should no longer be an option unless the primary input signal is PCM based. So all of these input signals, guys, are based on what signal's coming in. All the sound modes are going to be based on what signal. Um, as I think I showed you before, uh, so here, let's go back to something like cable sat for myself. So when I go to cable sat here, uh, uh, total disease. different Stephen types of choked up paying tribute to his sound modes, as we can see here. So, uh, I'll hit info real quick for you. You see that we're in PCM now, pulse code modulation. So there's going to be just a stereo left and right input signal coming in here. 
and with that it doesn't allow us a lot of sound modes so say we go to movie here and we run through the sound modes they're much different so that's what uh, we still got neural x though so we're able to take a pcm stereo signal and use the high channels with it which sounds great you know but um that's kind of what they're talking about there Another thing you can do is go to the front of these Marantz and Denon receivers. Uh, you have your dynamic EQ, dynamic volume, your pure direction, and all that. I've got to run Odyssey again, I will do. But yeah, that's basically you're going to want to choose the best amp assignment for your configuration and run through the signals that you're putting into this thing and make sure you got it all set up properly so it's all in the uh, brains of this guy here you're gonna want to do that but yeah a lot of times that is going to be in the input signal that's going to determine what your receiver is going to um, default to now defaulting to you know something is one thing you can change that but then immediately once it defaults to a sound mode we'll just click it to another one so a lot of receivers do that though um, for instance when I'm running a DTS X source uh, out of anything, the Oppo, PlayStation 4, whatever, even a, a Blu-ray out of that guy that's an HD Master Audio. HD Master Audio will show up on mine. Um, so on his, I don't know why it is doing that. It probably needs to configure something. Um, you know, he's probably got the height set up as, um, you know, a 7.1 as opposed to 11.1. And, it's you know, maybe his heights are turned on and he, he's not having a surround back, you know, thing going on. But so... There's, you know, no way to know for that, but if your receiver is defaulting to a specific sound mode, then you're going to want to change the configuration of the amp assignment and what options it allows, because each amp assignment features changes the capability of what sound modes you're able to go in. So if we just look at this really quickly, guys, and we do the amp assignments, um, run through those we're going to see that each one of them changes the sound modes we're able to go into. So if you look on the bottom here, as you can see, like this one doesn't even offer any of those sound modes. No DTSX, no Atmos during there. So um, you want to make sure that the, the layout and that your height speakers are selected and whatnot and that you're running the, the proper setup there. So there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll have many more things soon to come here. And uh, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thank you and take care.